guys. Hope that you're all doing well. Hopefully your families are fine. New normal, but hopefully we're all dealing with it the best we can. So last week we worked with surface area and volume of a cylinder. Week before that, surface area and volume of a rectangular prism. What we're gonna work with this week is gonna end up being the surface area and volume of a cone. And today we'll work with surface area, tomorrow we'll work with volume. And now a cone, what you all may know, it's exactly what you think it is. Almost think of an ice cream cone where you have that, and then on the base you have a circle, right? And since it's dimension, it's never gonna look like a perfect circle on the bottom. But that's all we have. We have the part that actually wraps around the cone, and then we have the base, which is always a circle. Now, when we're dealing with a cone, since it's a circle, we know that we have a radius, always a radius. And now for us to be able to find surface area, so again, whenever you're dealing with surface area, surface area is how much is on the outside of any three-dimensional figure. Volume is on what's on the inside. Today, we're gonna to work with surface area. How much is on the outside of a cone? And in order to actually figure out how much surface area a cone has, there's a formula for it. And we'll go over it. It's actually, let me give it to you now just so you can see it. It's gonna be pi r squared plus pi r l. And now the easy part is, the radius is self-explanatory. The radius is the portion of the circle, the radius of the circle that they give us. And so we have the radius, we have pi, we have squared, we have pi, we have radius, and then we have L. And what L represents is, we see this cone, and what L represents is literally how long the length of the cone is on the outside. So that's what L represents. It's how long that side of the cone is. And I say side because we're just thinking about the outer portion of it. It doesn't actually have any sides because of the circle. So L just represents the length of the cone, how long it is from the top portion all the way to the base. And what these two parts represent is pi r squared represents the circle, right? That would represent the circle, the base. So this would give us the area of the circle, what's on the bottom. What this would give us is the area of all around. And that's what that represents. So whereas this represents the area of the circle, this would represent the part that goes around. So basically, if you're thinking about an ice cream cone, think of this part as the actual cone itself, the part that you hold, the part that you eat at the end of the ice cream cone. So that would be pi r l is what goes around. Pi r squared would be the circle on the base. And since we're finding the total surface area, we add them up in the end. And that's all finding surface area really is for a cone. It's just applying that. This would give us how much material is on the outside of a cone. So we have pi r squared plus pi r l. Let's actually apply it. See if you guys can actually work with it. So we have a cone again. And again, it's very simple. Let me give you the measurements that we actually need. Let's say that the radius is, let's say, 3 centimeters. Right? And let's say that the length of the cone, let's make it six centimeters. So now if we wanted to find the surface area of this cone, we'd use a formula for the surface area. And let me separate this. So we know that the formula for the surface area would be pi r squared plus pi r l. And now all we want to do is we just want to substitute everything that we need. So going step by step, we have pi we know that the radius is three, so we'd substitute three there. We have squared plus, we have pi. We know again that the radius is three. And we know that the length in this case, the length of the cone would be six. And again, just seeing where everything came from. We have pi, which is there from the formula. We know that three is the radius. We have the square from there, plus we have pi. We know that the radius again is three, and we know that the length of the cone is six. And now once we have this, it's just simplifying everything. So if you wanted to, you can do everything all at once, but let's break it down. Before you multiply, you always wanna do the exponent. So we have three squared 
And again, three squared means three times three. Some people always make the mistake of seeing three times two, but we know that three times three, three squared gives us nine. So we have nine, don't forget the pi. Again, 3 squared was 9, brought down the pi, so that part there is done. And now we have the plus sign. And now, again, before we deal with the pi, let's just multiply these two numbers. And we know it's multiplication because they're next to each other with no signs in between. So we know that 3 times 6 would be 18. And don't forget the pi again. So, so far we have that. This would represent the first part, what the circle would be, the base. This would represent the part that's going around. We can now multiply them out to actually make it a lot easier to deal with. So we know that we can do 9 times 3.14 right, plus 18, sorry, 18 times 3.14. And again, it's 9 times 3.14. Then we have 18 times 3.14. Let me just grab the calculator for this. So we know that 9 times 3.14 gives us 28.26. 28.26. And we know that 18 times 3.14 gives us 56.52. And again, just to show you where these numbers actually came from, we did 9 times 3.14 to give us 28.26, and we did 18 times 3.14 to give us 56.52. Now all we need to do is just add them up. And once we add them up, we know that 28.26 plus 56.52, let me do this mentally, 5070, it's going to give us 84.78. Yep. I just got this from adding up 28.26 plus 56.52. And now let's not forget, since it's centimeters, we would put centimeters. And since we're dealing with surface area, surface area, since it's area, is always square. And that's it. It's very, very simple, very, very direct. And again, once we follow this process, we know that the 84.78 represents how much surface area is on that cone. Let's try another one just to make sure you guys actually have a good understanding of it. And again, I'll use, utilize the same picture just that way you don't have to keep erasing it and drawing the exact same thing over and over again. Let me give you another length. Let me give you another radius. And again, whenever we're dealing with circles, always remember a radius is half of a circle and a diameter is the full length of the circle. So let's say that the radius now is, let's use five meters. And let's say that the length is 10 meters. So we have that the radius is 5. We know that the length of the cone is 10. Same thing. Let's just find the surface area of a cone. And the formula is pi r squared plus pi r l. And now what we do here, just substitute everything that we know. We know that with the formula, pi would stay the same. We know that the radius is 5, so we have 5 squared plus pi stays the same. We know again that the radius is 5, and we know that the length is 10. And all I did was just substitute. We had the pi which stayed the same. We know that the radius is 5. We have the squared, we have the plus. Pi stays the same. We know that the radius is 5. And we know that the length is 10. Just like we did before. Let's simplify this. Before multiplying out the pi, we can actually do 5 squared. And again, 5 squared means 5 times 5. So 5 times 5 gives us 25 pi. So that part is done. For the second part, let's not forget the plus sign. Before we deal with the pi, let's do 5 times 10, which gives us 50 pi. Now I want to show you guys this before that. Just to recap, 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25, brought down the pi. We know that 5 times 10 was 50. 50 times pi gives us that. Now to simplify this, I want to show you something different just because you probably are getting more comfortable now since you dealt with cylinders and pi all the last week. 
we have over here, and it says 25 pi. So what this is basically telling you is you have 25 pi's. So think of it this way. If somebody asks you how many pi's are here, you got 25. Over here, we have 50 pi's. So if you have 25 pi's here, and you have 50 pi's there, all together you have 75 pi. And the reason I'm doing this is one, you can leave your answer like that, or just makes it a lot easier now to actually multiply it. Because instead of multiplying two numbers, now you're just multiplying one. And again, where I got this from was 25 times pi, 25 pi plus 50 pi, whenever you add them up, because you have 25 and 50, gives us 75 pi's. And if you wanted to, you can do it the exact same way you did before. If you want to do 25 times 3.14, if you wanted to do 50 times 3.14, and then add them up, give you the exact same answer. But now, since I simplified it a lot easier, we can do what we've always been doing. We would do 75 times 3.14, and when we multiply that out, 75 times 3.14, it gives us 235.5. 5. And again, since we're dealing with surface area, we know it's going to be meters. And since it's area, it's going to be square. There you go. Surface area of a cone, it's very, very simple. Whenever it comes to applying the formula, pi r squared plus pi r l. And if anybody ever asks you again, the pi r squared represents the area of the circle, pi r l represents the area going around a cone, whatever process you like. If you like adding the pi's, go ahead. If you like multiplying everything out by 3.14, go ahead. But again, today we dealt with surface area of a cone. Tomorrow we're gonna deal with volume of a cone, which is just as easy as well. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask, feel free to reach out to me. All the best. Take care, guys.